Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the DaVinci Resolve OFX Relight Node. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion. And I'm going to hit Shift Space, type Relight. Now, yesterday we went over the Relight Node with the RLT shorthand behind it, which was this node. But today we're going to go over the DaVinci Resolve OFX version of the Relight Node. So, and if you notice, yesterday's note just said Relight. This one's going to say AI Relight. And this is the DaVinci Resolve OFX version, which means it was originally developed to be used within the color grading tab, but you can also use it within Fusion. And there are some subtle differences. Now, an overall look and uh, what it does is pretty much going to do the same thing as yesterday's note, but there are a few subtle differences. So down here on our yesterday's node, we only had our external map. Under the relight node, we have blanking regions down here as well. But if we use our input, we have this surface map output like we do on our relight node that we went over yesterday. So let's go back to use internal and let's talk about this blanking first. And what our blanking regions is going to do is going to help fix any blanking issues or issues caused from blanking. And if you know blanking are the black bars on the bottom and the top or on the side, if we have different aspect ratios going. So let's go ahead and fake some blanking so you can see what's happening. And uh, first we're going to look at our relight node and you can see the map it created internally. Now, if I was to add a blanking region, so shift space, blanking fill, and uh, we changed our blanking fill, you can see how changing this is changing our lighting, especially if I go to our blanking fill and uh, let's change our fade amount and uh, let's make this black like a normal blanking. So now we've got blanking going on in the bottom. And if we look at this, you can see we've got some weird artifacts happening from this blanking. So on our relight node, under our blanking, we can use automatic or we can select process entire frame. We can select auto plus extra crop. So we can come in here, we can crop our top and our bottom to help fix some of those blanking issues. Or we can select manual and ma just manually uh, change it. But you can see as we're changing those blanking is changing our lighting. So if you're having weird side effects from any blanking that's coming in, you can uh, use this blanking regions to fix that. So let's go ahead and delete this blanking. And we'll uh, jump back into our little note here. Now on our note itself, we have our effects mask. So we can mask off where this effect is taking place if we need to. And up top we have our source two. And this source two is just like yesterday's node when we we're talking about normals. This is the input that you're gonna input your normals. And let's delete yesterday's. And that's where this surface map comes into play. So use internal is just going to uh, create it internally. If we have an input actually coming in from this input, we would select use input two. Now right here we can output our surface map, but unlike yesterday's node, we don't have the option to uh, push along those extra channels. So if we look at our channels, we're just using R, G, and B for our normals, and we don't have the option to uh, push along those normals on the X, the Y, and the Z. And again, we have the same three types of light, and underneath we have our relighting map preview. So. If you remember from yesterday, we want to make sure we shut this off when we're actually doing our actual effect. So to build that correctly, let's go ahead and add our merge again. We're going to input our original footage to the background. Let's bring in a color node and put our footage and this is going to go to our foreground. And then from our relight is going to go to our effects mask. So now if we look at our merge node and let's go ahead and uh, create some crazy colors here. You can see the uh, effect is covered in our entire image. And that's because we forgot to turn this relighting map preview off. But if we shut that off, now our lighting is only taking place where it's supposed to. 
So we have the same gizmos for our point source. So we can move this to wherever we want. And we can change our light height with this gizmo. And if we look at our light position, you can see uh, we've got our light source on the X, the Y, and we've got a Z. And that's the one difference for our light height, which was in yesterday's uh, node, we have light source Z. So this is our Z depth of that lighting. So if I turn our relighting node back on, and we look at our little lighting node, you can see it's going from the back to the front further, kind of mimicking your Z depth. Under our light properties, we have brightness. We have reach, which is going to determine how far that light is reaching. And we have contrast. Under our surface properties, again, we have glossiness. So if I turn this on and we look at our relating node, you can see we're changing the glossiness of that map. And if our glossiness is up, we can change the specularity and we can change the shadow softness. Now, right here, we have this source follows FX tracker. And like I said, this is a DaVinci Resolve OFX node. So this node is meant to be uh, used within the color grading tab. So when you track within the color grading tab, as long as you have this checked, it's automatically gonna follow that track. Now you're gonna have problems with this following tracks within Fusion. And you can do it, but it takes a lot of work to get these independent X, Y, and Z locations to follow a track with Infusion. So it's easier just to go ahead and animate anything using your animation, meaning if I want it to uh, be here, and then I want this to animate up here, it's easier just to do that and uh, create your animation on here than it is to... Uh, get this to connect to a tracker. But if anybody out there knows a simple, quick way to get this to connect to a tracker, please let us all know. So let's go ahead and refresh this. So that's your point source light. Now we also have directional light, which kind of works the same as uh, our other relight node. So we can move our uh, location of our directional light. And then under spotlight, it's uh, the same as yesterday's node. We have our uh, spotlight target. We have our spotlight location. And then our light height or our Z source depth on this node. So if we want to go ahead and create a little point light, let's change that up. Let's go to our color corrector. Let's make this realistic again. And there you go. We've got new color added to our lighting using the DaVinci Resolve OFX Relight node. So, I will see you in the next note breakdown.